we take a deeper look at the formation of Russia. The original Russian people were composed of scattered tribes that the Greeks and the Romans called the Scythians. Having never been invaded by the Romans, the area became the crossroads for the nomadic invasion forces that would eventually sack Rome, the Huns, the Avars, the Goths, and more. The settlers in the area would come to be known as the Slavs. The area was ideal for farming and trade with its long river systems that connected the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. Like the Germanic people, the Slavs tended to live in tribes led by family clans. At the same time as Vikings began ravaging Europe, another group of Vikings sailed into Russia. The Slavs knew them as the Varangians and would trade with them and also pay taxes to them for protection. Kiev was established as a major trading center. Eventually, the Varangians and the Slavs would settle in together, calling their descendants the Rus. The Rus made Rurik their king and centered their government in Novgorod. Under the leadership of Oleg I, they would recenter themselves at Kiev so they could make deeper trade connections to the Byzantine Empire. Having limited connections to the Latin Roman Catholic Church made it easier for Constantinople to encourage the Greek Orthodox Church on the Rus. In 863, two Orthodox monks named Kirill and Methodius arrived to convert the Rus. They also translated the Bible into Slavic in a written language they called Cyrillic. In 957, Olga of Kiev converted. Orthodoxy would become official when Vladimir I would convert and marry the Byzantine emperor's sister. They adapted the art, architecture, and music of the Byzantine. Onion Dome churches began to appear, and church and state became closely tied, having few of the issues the Western Europe was having between the Pope and the Kings. Under Yaroslav the Wise, a law code was created, and they attempted to make greater connections to Western Europe. Despite the progress, the Kievan Rus fell to the typical patterns of dynasty, and Byzantium was slowly collapsing into its eventual death. Trade began to dry up and Russian princes struggled to maintain control, and then the Mongols arrived. Genghis' grandson Batu led a group of Mongols nicknamed the Golden Horde because of their tent colors. They rode into Russian cities as a destructive force of nature and burned Kiev. The Mongols killed a lot of Russians. They moved into a capital outside of the Russian states on the Volga, and Russian princes were required to make tribute payments, or else the Mongols would ride in and continue to raid their towns. However, the Orthodox Church benefited from the Yasa's freedom of religion, and merchants benefited from the stable trade routes, but it did begin the process of the Russians getting cut off culturally from the West. Under Prince Alexander Nevsky, Russia would expand its northern borders and fight off a Germanic invasion, and be celebrated by the Mongols, who would name Nevsky a Grand Prince. Moscow was left mostly untouched by Mongol attacks and was able to gain in power, even becoming the center of the Orthodox Church in Russia. Muscovite princes like Ivan III would eventually push out the Mongols and strengthen the feudal system. They also took on the Byzantine ritual of calling themselves Tsar or Caesar. His grandson Ivan the Terrible, or Ivan IV, increased serfdom and launched the Aprechniki to terrorize, question, and execute the populations.